some of the crosswind testing we're doing, it's not just a matter of doing a crosswind landing. We can go do a crosswind landing and simulate an engine failure at the same time, or perhaps simulate engine failure and also simulate some flight control failure in there. So it's all those what ifs, all those backup uh, designs that are built in, all the redundancies. We have to check that out as well. We have tested the airplane quite a bit here for various airplanes to do to chase crosswinds to Keflavik because it's a fantastic site with two 90 degree runways. It blows very hard as you can see and they have instrument landing systems uh, going out the two different directions and you don't find that in very many places at all so no matter what happens we can get crosswinds, headwinds, tailwinds here. They're currently blowing out there. That seemed to be a pretty good combination to take off on 0 2 and then land on 2 0. It's the most efficient. We want to land on 2 0 because of the crosswind component, and taking off on 0 2 is just a little quicker after we land. We flew this morning already and got some good uh, auto land. That's with the autopilot automatically landing the airplane in high crosswinds as well as just manually flying in crosswinds. Um, to see how the flight controls operate and how the basic stability controls of, uh, and to evaluate the stability controls of the airplane. The winds are getting even stronger, so now we're scrambling to try to identify another flight this afternoon. It may, may come as a surprise, but for just the basic landing of the airplane, manually flying the airplane, there are not published crosswind limits. When we send the paperwork out to the, the, oper the operators, we tell them the maximum demonstrated and uh, so that's what we're doing. We're trying to go out to find the max win, maximum winds we can find and demonstrate that we can still land manually. So evaluate the, the handling qualities and the airplane characteristics in high wind conditions during the takeoff and approach phase, including when you get into ground effects and then also that, that ground or air to ground transition. Uh, that's the big thing. Uh, we're also at the same time collecting auto land and autopilot takeoff conditions uh, in that same environment as well as LVTO which is low visibility takeoff. It's a, a functionality within our HUD system. Uh, we're evaluating that in these, uh, these conditions. Then at the same time we've got conditions like landing uh, with the thrust traversers down to low speed in the crosswind. Are there any engine uh, anomalies? The rest of our testing really is backup testing for when we don't get the weather conditions. We have flight management computer conditions, we've got auto throttle conditions which is part of our auto flight system, other uh, autopilot cruise conditions to do, and then uh, this, this airplane has been tasked with testing and developing the nitrogen generation system, NGS. And uh, we've got lots of uh, data channels and, and instrumentation in our tanks to measure concentrations and the temperature. And so those are conditions we can do when we don't have the weather conditions. The program has changed in that now we're getting deeper and deeper into all the various systems and all the various characteristics of the airplane. And we're, we're moving into the certification phase. So we've done a lot of testing. For, for Boeing's purposes to document our design, but then obviously we have to have uh, FAA personnel on board and show them to get the airplane actually certified. The uh, 787 is much more highly augmented. There's m many more feedback loops to tell what the airplane is doing, what that surface is doing, how the airplane is responding. So in all three axes of the airplane, you've got this much higher levels of, in of augmentation that help smooth out the response of the airplane, help protect if there's uh, large motions that come with the airplane, it helps smooth all that out. So, uh, and it just makes it a nice flying airplane. You can, you know, the, it, it, uh, it enhances the things that were already there in the 777. Every day is something unique. Uh, you know, so I, I love my job. I think I've got the best job in the, com in the company. And, you never stop learning, it seems like, in this job. You're doing some new type of testing or checking some new system or coming up with some new flight test technique. And that seems to go on every day. And you certainly never get bored. There's always something exciting going on and, and uh, something challenging. So each phase that we go through, whether it's 
flying to the North Pole last, last week and orbiting there for three hours to check out navigation systems or taking an airplane intentionally out into the worst icing conditions you can find just to let it accumulate out there. All those things are unique. You have to figure out how to do them safely, but it's exciting to go do that and it's exciting to be a part of that. So I guess each phase of the program brings its own uh, new thrills.